Hello, everybody, and welcome to Coffee with Kenobi's Facebook Live every Monday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm your host, Dan Z. Thrilled to be talking Star Wars with each and every one of you. Well, happy Monday. Wow, look at everybody's here ready to talk Star Wars, the Bad Batch. Uh, Mason, of course, is here. Let me get rid of this and bring in everybody. Hello, Mason. Hello, Minta. Happy CWK Day. Ian, happy CWK Day to you. And he says, make Solo happen day. That's right. This is the day we celebrate the release of Solo, a Star Wars story, and everybody gets excited and hopes for a sequel. Wouldn't that be exciting if that happened? Daniel, happy Monday to you. And Ross, happy Monday to you as well. Hello, Jason. Good to see all of our familiar faces here. I actually forgot to schedule tonight's CWK Live, which is why it came on so wonky, so I apologize for that. But we're all set and ready to go, ready to start this Starship talking about all the great things we loved about the most recent episode of The Bad Batch, Cornered. Happy Monday to you, Mary. Very good to see you. Good to see all of you, of course, every Monday night. Good deal. All right. So this week, Brewing in Star Wars, uh, we already kind of talked about it, but let's uh, roll the official introduction here. And now, let's see what's brewing in the week yes so this week uh there wasn't any major major announcements last week of course we had the major announcement that celebration got moved up which is great and hopefully everybody can hear me okay i'm trying different microphone techniques i used to have the mic right here but apparently if you keep it to the side it sounds a little bit better so you let me know how that sounds and i will be happy to adjust it because that's kind of the point it's important for you to be able to actually hear me that would certainly help a lot so Today is the anniversary of Soul 2. There's a lot of anniversaries this week. The anniversaries of Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom. Indiana Jones and Last Crusade. Phantom Menace. Attack of the Clones. All kinds of stuff. Ian says, loud and clear, Dan, so that's good. I'm glad. I am very glad of that. All right. Thank you, Mary. Says it sounds great. Awesome. All right. Let's get this a little bit bigger so we can see everybody really well and what you're all talking about here. A little bit of production on the fly. As far as what else is brewing in the world of stars, feel free to let me know. I know there are some great Funko Pops that were announced. A lot of stuff from The Mandalorian. As far as Din Djarin himself holding Grogu and Din Djarin does not have his helmet on, which is pretty cool. I know Ian and I, Ross, I'm not sure if you uh, pre-ordered that or not, but a lot of people were very excited about that one. For sure, we saw the release of the Darksaber. At Galaxy's Edge and Batuu, both at Disneyland and at Disney World. And that certainly sent a lot of excitement through the Zare household. There's no doubt about that. Hello, Greg. Good to have you on the show, bud. Uh, Amber is here. Hello, Amber. Good. Everybody's coming in. It's great to see all of you here on Coffee with Kenobi. Let's go ahead and jump into our top five because it's a great episode. In fact, right after this, I'm going to record with Ross and time to talk in more detail about the episode but we're going to really break it down for you tonight here of course in our top five segment where you in your top five segments get to decide your top five favorite moments from the episode and really get a chance to share your thoughts with the thousands and thousands of people that listen to coffee with kenobi each and every week so it's really cool stuff very cool stuff all right so yeah let's go ahead and do that let's talk about our top five hey my cousin raquel is here hello raquel good to see you Ian definitely, he says he definitely all over those pre-orders. Wow. Your collection must be quite impressive, sir. Quite impressive. All right. Tonight's top five. Top five moments from Corner. This is the episode that just showed uh, up last Friday. Uh, we've had a couple of days to digest it naturally. And you may have noticed if you are a member of the CWK Cafe, which is our coffee with kenobi facebook group and that is of course again naturally it's on facebook you can go to www.coffeewithkenobi.com slash community or just go into facebook and type in coffee with kenobi you'll certainly see me there and the familiar logo designed by Corey club those eight years ago but we have fridays when we the shows come out we post hey share your spoiler free thoughts so give everybody a chance to watch it and then we do on Sundays, we post, hey, now you can share your spoiler filled thoughts. So it's a good way to start the conversation before Facebook Live 
every Monday night. So let's go ahead and talk about our top five moments. My number five uh, right here is when Wrecker versus Fennec Shand. I wasn't sure what to expect. I knew that Wrecker was going to be fiercely loyal to Omega and try to protect her. But Fennec Shand took him out like he was a ragdoll. She used his weight against him, slammed him against the tunnel. Pretty powerful stuff. Um, showing you that Fennec Shand is more than a match for Wrecker and the Bad Batch. I thought that was some really cool storytelling right there. All right, Ian. Number five says, Great chase sequence. Hunter's efforts to rescue Omega from Fennec reminded me of the great Obi-Wan Anakin chase with Sam Wessel. Oh, I agree with that for sure. That's that's definitely a thing. Absolutely a thing. Uh, let's see. I mean, to landing on the planet, I feel like being back on Tatooine or another planet spaceport. Very cool visuals. Yeah, the animation on this one was really excellent. Number five for Minta. I'm worth more than 2,000. Poor Echo. Yeah, that's great. That that scene is going to come up a lot tonight uh, on my list. Amber, similar to that, she says, whatever you require, which is, of course, Echo doing a great impersonation of a droid. Number five for Greg, the intro of Clink, 225, DK3, and the CG67 protocol droid. Yeah, they're fun. They're really fun, Greg. I'm glad you brought them up. Number five for Jason Pantora, a nice reference to Clone Wars Season 1, and I love the beautiful architecture of the city. Yeah, it was cool. We had my, a student of mine and I were looking that up today, figuring out where the, because it was supposed to be cold, but that's where the moon is, and we had a lot of fun with that for sure. Number five for Daniel, the beginning cinematic shot of the Bad Batch ship coming into frame. He said, wow, so cool. Mason says, Minta, good choice. Well, there you go. Good choice, Minta, from... From Mason to Minto. Ross, number five. Raspar six, the Soliston with the toothpick, explaining how to bribe him to Wrecker and Tech. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was a very unusual name. In fact, I had to do a double take on that. Uh, what a lot of people do, and if you're not doing this, I would highly suggest it. Kurt, certainly watch the episode naturally. But when you watch it again, or maybe when you watch it the first time, turn the captions on. Turn the captions on because you learn the names of all the characters and all the planets, sometimes when it's happening live, it's hard to catch it all. But if you have the captions on, it's a great way to catch everything. Mason's number five is the same as mine when Wrecker versus Fennec Shan. Now, we both liked when Fennec Shan fought Hunter. That was exciting, too. But that one was a little more how you would expect. Whereas the Wrecker one, who knows? So that was why it was cool to see it re resolve the way that it did. Okay. Number four in our top five favorite list is repairs. Now, when I say repairs, I don't mean when when Tech and Wrecker are, fit, are working on I mean when all the droids that Greg mentioned, Clink, 225, DK3, and CG67, were working on it with Echo. I just love seeing them all together as a team, feeling like, you know, they finally got the, the call to be in the big dance. I'm in the game! And they got to get out there and fix the Marauder. I just love that. I like seeing them all work together. I like Echo being in charge. I like how the protocol droid eventually took over too. I thought that was great fun. Okay. Everybody else is number four. Minta says, Wrecker versus Fennec. I did root for him, but I was secretly hoping for Fennec to win. Interesting. For Fennec to win. No, that's fair. That's fair. Fennec is a cool character for sure. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Who else? Uh, Mary says, Wrecker having no idea about hanging over credits, figuring out how to be a civilian. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cute. I like that too. Number four for Greg, Wrecker being asked to help fix the ship. Yes, certainly. Ross, number four, Pantora as a location. The marketplace and clothing are so vivid. It really made me think Coruscant level 1313 when the Soka and Trace are eating. Yes, I can see that. In fact, we kind of had to think, Mason and I, about where we'd seen this planet before because of things like that. Ian's number four, keeping us in suspense. Who is Fennec communicating with at the end? This, I don't know. And of course, I don't speculate and I don't look at rumors, so I'm just going to have to wait and see. Very exciting. Jason, number four, Fennec Shand using her wits and her surroundings to defeat Wrecker. Very good. Very, very good. That was cool. I like, I like that when it's not all just about combat, but using your brains and your surroundings and your utilities, your resources. I, li I like that. Uh, let's see, James. Hey, James. He says, the look of the planet, it looked 
really looked and reminded me of Coruscant. Very cool. Hello, Eric. Good to have you, buddy. Number four for Daniel Wrecker getting bested by Fennec in the sewers. Absolutely. Amber Omega wondering what a bounty hunter is. I like that too. The idea of, you know, bringing in, there are other things besides good and evil. There are shades of gray. And I, I thought that was a cool part. Number four for Mason was Fennec Shan. Just having Fennec Shan in the episode voiced by Ming Now Wen, seeing her animated compared to seeing her in The Mandalorian and soon The Book of Boba Fett. Well, in December, I guess. Those were all very cool things. And Mason loves having her in the episode. Again, especially voiced by Ming Now Wen. So that just adds a lot of continuity to it, which is super cool. All right, let's move on to number three. Number three here for me is the Trooper doll. Now, I people have been saying that this planet reminds them, Pantor reminds them of Coruscant, and I certainly see that. What it reminded me of more than anything was Batu, Galaxy's Edge. And when I saw the Trooper doll, it, it put it over the top for me. Now, at Galaxy's Edge, at the time of this recording, they sell Stormtroopers, and they the one in Rogue One is called Stormy. That's what Jyn Erso has when she's little. But in this one, it was a clone trooper. Mason pointed that out to me. I couldn't make it out at first what it was. Those trooper dolls are sold in Batu in the marketplace. And a lot of the the architecture, I mean, of course, Doug Chang designed a lot of stuff in Batu, and I'm sure his design influenced the look of this episode cornered. But I just really felt that Galaxy's Edge Batu vibe and just made me very happy, very much cemented because of that trooper doll that Omega found. So cool. All right. So let's see. Uh, number three, did anyone from Greg, did anyone else think that the local cops on bikes reminded them of the Shriners and local parades with the fezes on that just hit me that way? I could see that. I would knew there was a connection there that I wasn't quite thinking of, but yeah, that's a good one, Greg, for sure. Number three for me to echo using the droids to repair the ship. Certainly. Number three for Mary Omega in the marketplace, all the things she was discovering, the toys, the pet we saw in resistance. And her wonderment of everything. Very good. Very fun. Yeah, I, she was like a kid in a candy store, kind of. And of course, the you break it, you buy it part two. Ian, number three, the dynamic between tech and wrecker, the perfect combo of brains and brawn. Oh, that's a good good point. I like that too. It's very unique. We haven't seen tech and wrecker together. We've seen tech and echo plenty of times, but never tech and wrecker. So that was a fun combination. So Amber says, me too. I'm assuming, Amber, you're talking about how it reminds you of Galaxy's Edge as well. It certainly did me. Number three for Jason. Fennec Shand, very smoothly rotating Hunter's knife to point it at him as they fought in the market. Wasn't that cool? She had his, they had their wrists together and she kind of flipped her knife in his, her hand while they were fighting. I thought that was really slick. I agree. That's a good one, Jason. Uh, definite bad two vibes. Good answer, Dan. Oh, cool. I'm glad, I'm glad that you caught that as well, Ian. Thanks, man. Ross, Clank, and now Star Wars fans immediately went nuts on social media about it. A fun new LE series droid, a little sass factory. That is for sure. Amber number three, Fennec stealing food and how Omega was confused. Yes, that was interesting for sure. Again, the morality brought up and in, in how Omega's learning sort of how the world works for some people. Or doesn't. Daniel, those three droids are so great and they repair starships i know i love them mason and i loved them mason's number three was the trooper same as mine the trooper doll and you know of course it's been less than two months and mason was at galaxy's edge for the first time he loved it as much as i did and we were just so excited about how it felt like bad too i was so hoping for them to say it was bad too but obviously it wasn't all right let's get to number three eric says the astromech droid with the arms reminded me of the robots from silent running oh that's a that's an interesting comparison eric i like that all right, let's go to number two. Number two for me is Clink. We've been talking about Clink throughout this episode. Clink is the small astromech with the arms, like in Resistance, the the L3, right? The L3, or no, the, the LE droid, the LE series droid that we were introduced to in Star Wars Resistance. But this one, Clink, was very charming and rapidly moved up to my top five favorite droids ever. Crazy, I know, but I think a lot of other people felt the way I like the, the swagger, the strut. The design, and then the, the sass, of course. So good. James, let's see. James, number three, had the chase with Hunter and Fennec. Everything about him 
It about reminded him of Attack of the Clones when Anakin and Obi-Wan chased down Sam. Oh, for sure. For sure. Number two, for Mita, the Omega rescue was amazing to see Hunter go through great lengths to save her, even if it meant breaking the law. That's true. Greg, number two, the chase sequence at the end was so well done. It had a nice Attack of the Clones vibe. Definitely. A lot of nice callbacks on this one. Number two, for Mary, Echo being sold his feelings about his worth and then leading the droids to help repair the ship, his interactions with the protocol droid. Ian's number two, the first appearance of Fennec Shand. Even though we know we'll be seeing her at some point, it was cool to see a character first introduced in Mando appearing in animation. So yeah, this is the reverse. Instead of seeing a character in The Clone Wars or Rebels and then animation, and this time we've seen him in live action and then they we go and have him in animated form. So it was a cool reversal. Greg, epic. That was my number three, James. So there you go. That's awesome. Uh, Amber, number two. Pantora, it is for Amber. Number two for Jason. Echo reluctantly agreeing to be sold as a droid. Fine, but not at that price. I'm worth more than 2000 There you go. <laughs> Ross, Omega stepping up and releasing the cargo on the speeder in an attempt to escape the bounty hunter. That's a very a very cool action sequence, by the way. I agree. Daniel, number two, Echo and Hunter debating Echo's worth. That one's come up a lot. I like that that's come up a lot. I didn't think of that one specifically, but I do really like that part. And number two uh, for Mason is when Echo is a droid. Echo is a droid. That is Mason's number two. Uh, we like the design. We like the look. And we like sort of the, the interactions in that one. And Mason's number two. Is my number one, Echo and Droid Disguise. I thought it was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I don't know why they hadn't thought of it before. Echo didn't even have it cross his mind, but I think there was a little bit of pride there. And of course, the clone wouldn't want to be compared to a droid because of the Clone Wars themselves, so that makes sense to me. When he locks that mask and, and that helmet, and then he decides to play the game, and when he works with the droids, which is more kind of my number four, I love that. It, just, it was good to see some heart, some genuine heart, uh, poured in that wasn't related to stuff with Omega. I love this stuff with Omega, of course, don't get me wrong. But to see the other characters have that kind of heart and pride and humanity was was very, very fun. So bravo. I really liked Echo and Droid Disguise. Okay, so what does everybody else have for their number ones? Ian, Clink, more sassy teddy bear, teddy bear droids in Star Wars, please. So that's funny. That's a funny way to explain it. By the way, Mason's number one is my number two, and my number two is his number one. So Mason's number one is Clank also, because he's such a fun, cool little droid. We got to have a figure of Clank, Hasbro. We got to. That would be so cool. All right, number one for Jason. Echo and the droids. Gear up, fellas. We're going into the field. Oh, see? I love that, too. That was just so darn entertaining. Love it. Ross, number one. Fennec Shan, just as exciting, cunning, and dangerous animated as Ming-Na Wen's first live-action appearance as the character in The Mandalorian. And Ross, I had a feeling, as much as I know that you like Fennec Shand, I had a feeling that was going to be your number one. You did not you did not disappoint. Greg's the same way. Fennec was so well written, not just one-sided. So many different aspects of her character. And they, they left it open for nuance, didn't they? They left it open for wondering if there is a heart in there or not. And Interesting. Very interesting. We see seeds of that in Mando, too. Uh, James number two, Echo being sold as a droid. I love the idea. He really does look like a droid now, sadly. And we got to have an action figure for that one. A lot of action figure potential in this episode. Number one for Mary, the introduction of Fennec Shand. Very similar to many of you. Who she is working for? Is she an assassin yet or just a bounty hunter? Hoping to get more of her backstory during Bad Batch. Even maybe she already knows Maul. Ooh, that would be interesting. I hadn't thought about that, Mary, but that's very interesting. Number one, Fennec's debut. Her fighting skills were amazing. Makes me wonder who she contacted. Cad Bane, maybe? Well, how about that? Amber, the speeder chase made me think of Zam versus Anakin. Cool. Very cool. I like we're getting some very similar ones. Even more than usual. Because I think the, the stand-up moments really stand out. Eric, I also like the scene when Tech was slicing into the computer and we hear the police tracking Omega. Reminds me of the scene in THX 1138 when they're trying to capture THX. Even sounded the same audibly. And Eric, I'm sure... Oh, it's a great catch, of course. But I am i bet you that's not an accent, I would think. I don't know, but good catch, man. James, the protocol droids you see in the creature from Resistance. Yes, a little dog-type creature. I wrote down my notes, but I don't have my notes with me. Number one for Daniel, the chase scene, as others have stated. 
animation was great and had me thinking back to Kenobi and Skywalker and getting Zam. Nice. Very nice. I already said Mason's number one, Clink also. But, you know, if anybody wants to weigh in any more, please feel free to do so. But a, a really, really fun episode. I'll save more, many of my comments for when we do the overall review on the podcast, which, of course, will drop on Thursday. But, yeah, I really, I really liked it. I really liked it. Well, I don't know. Should I drop the episode on, on Thursday? I mean, I'm going to record it after Facebook Live. Should I do it tomorrow? But then you'll have two episodes. So maybe, yeah, I'll, I'll just wait to the usual time. Give you a little bit of time to process it. And who knows, maybe our conversation, myself um, and Tom and Ross, maybe something we talk about will spark away you look at it again. I don't know. I am wondering if since this one is, since this first episode is 16 seasons, but Loki's coming out, I wonder how that's going to work. I don't know. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, next week, of course, Next week's top five. It's so much easier to do top fives when there's a live show going on. But the top five moments from episode five of The Bad Batch. That'll be next week's top five for sure. Okay, so let's see. What is what is next? Honestly, I don't have anything else scheduled besides our top fives. So we're going to jump jump right into Ask Dan Z. James says, I'm thinking this week is a Rex episode. I could be wrong, but I have a feeling. Eric says, uh, Fennec's talking to Grief Karga. I don't know. All good ones is... I like, you know, I don't speculate or theorize or try to not do that because for me, the anticipation, if it's wrong, then I end up being disappointed and I just rather soak it in. But I know a lot of people love that. So that's cool. Um, and Loki says, Ian, Loki says, you might like that. Ian says, Loki drops on Wednesdays, of course. I feel like that one might have been moved so that they could uh, not have any interference when Black Widow comes out on a Friday as well. I don't know. Let's go ahead and jump into Ask Dan Z. So this week we had news of a promotion for Dave Filoni and Ross wants to know, is the Filoni announcement official? Here's the thing. It is. Here's something that other people don't know. And it was confirmed on Twitter by somebody who would know. That happened last summer, but... It, they didn't make a big stink about it because Dave's insanely busy. I don't know how the guy sleeps. I mean, people say I don't sleep, but I do sometimes, you know, every night. But Dave, whew, between all the stuff with animation and the Mandalorian and the and the Ahsoka and the Book of Boba Fett and everything else he's got going on, I don't know. But he's he's had that title. I forget the official official title, but his promotion from Lucasfilm was actually one year ago. But yeah, everybody's excited because of, because of course Dave Filoni's brought us so many wonderful high quality Star Wars things. And uh, he learned directly from George Lucas, which of course is absolute, um, absolutely amazing. So yeah, it is, it is kind of old news, but no one knew it. John Noel, Doug Chang and Filoni have the same title right now. Uh, do they? Uh, I, I actually don't have it in front of me, so I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, let's see. So CWK this week, we last we did our review of the replacements, naturally, and then we're going to record the one uh, now about uh, the episode we're just talking about now. Cornered. Uh, so I, I must have misspoke because Mason says episodes, not seasons for Bad Batch. Yes, I meant 16 episodes of the Bad Batch, not 16 seasons. <laughs> Sorry about that, Mason. Thanks for helping me, buddy. Amber says, what season is Mason on for Clone Wars? That's actually a good question. Um, so he, we don't, we're not really watching them like directly, like season one, all of them, season two, all of them. We're just kind of jumping around, uh, mostly by what we're interested in. We've been doing a lot of stuff with previous clone episodes and clean clone centric episodes, but I would say he's probably seen a good third, maybe a little over a third of the Clone Wars right now, but he's seen a nice smattering from everywhere. Minta says, if you're interested, I do have a storefront with one of my pieces um, that did sell. The first one was taken down because of a legal issue. Uh, for any Star Wars or sci-fi, it's worth checking out. Oh, yeah, from your from your T Public store. Yeah, that's right. You put that in a CWK cafe. That's pretty cool stuff. And your art was great. Uh, Greg says, gotta love our kids for sure. Anybody here of, of Kenobi production progress? Uh, I haven't heard anything. And again, of course, I try to stay out of that. Disney and Lucasfilm have been very good to me with stuff, so I try to not kind of 
ruin the recipe that's going on in the in the Kenobi soup, so to speak. But I have not heard or seen anything uh, for sure. But I can't wait to find out more definitely about what is going on. Uh, let's see. This like this is going to be a really quick show this week. How about that? Well, let's see. I think next week. Well, no, we just did trivia, didn't we, Mason? Because Mason's going to help me with trivia. But we're going to try to do something of a new segment next week if we can get it all scheduled. But we, may, we may try to do a new segment that we do monthly on Coffee with Kenobi that I think will be fun. James says, any Bad Batch characters you want to see be made into a Black Series figure? Yes, I definitely want to see um, um, all the droids that were just added. I want to see Echo in his droid uh, with his droid mask on. I think that would be cool. I think Hunter... Wearing his like on world garb where he's supposed to be like blending in like a local would be cool. But what about you, James, or anyone else? What Black Series action figures would you like to see? Of course, I've got hard to tell right now what the how far away they are, but I've got Crosshair still in the box naturally. Pretty cool. And then we have Hunter, my favorite character from the Bad Batch. The helmets are really cool. And I yes, you can open it even has a little knife at the bottom here. And yes, you can open them and put them back in the box, but you know, I'm sort of reluctant to do that sometimes. You said that Corey moving in progress. No, Corey's doing great. He's already pretty well moved in. And a lot of people know that because you are a member of the CWK Alliance, which of course is our exclusive um place to go to support Coffee with Kenobi and get exclusive content. This week on Pour Over, we did top five rock anthems. Now, Pour Over isn't always Star Wars related, but it's always me, uh, co-founder of Coffee with Kenobi Corey Club, and Tom Gross, who occasionally does the news and, of course, helps me as we review different episodes uh, from Star Wars. So, yeah, that's that's a fun one. But if you're interested and you want to be a member of the CWK Alliance, you get a lot of really really cool things for sure. I mean, you get, not only do you get access to CWK pour over, is great let's see how about um uh bad batch the the vintage collection you know what craig i would love that that would be great the only downside is i i literally i don't know where i don't have any wall space we have to start going to the ceiling if they do that so who knows who knows uh let's see james says i want an omega with the resistance cat thing <laughs> that would be fun omega would be a fun figure for sure. Uh, let's see what else. Um, the storefront is named T U M I A U S. I plan to upload more of my work soon. Well, let us let us know. Me too. We'll certainly check it out. Eric, I got a six inch Zori Bliss from eBay. Oh, nice. Very cool. Ross is all things Fennec Shand. Definitely. Uh, Amber, I can't hear. Sorry, can anybody else not hear? It looks like my microphone is working on this end, but let me know. James, we need more protocol droids in the Black Series 6-inch K3PO would be nice. There you go. Uh, everybody's saying sound. Huh. Test one, two. Uh, is the sound still off? Every time the logo goes up, the sound goes out. Oh, maybe that was the problem. Maybe that was the problem. Oh, you know what? It's probably when I went in and I did the, the CWK Alliance commercials. I did a really nice commercial talking about it, and I forgot to unmute myself. Okay, now we can hear. I had the mute turned on for the CWK Alliance. So again, what the CWK Alliance is, is it is our Patreon page. It's for people to support Coffee with Kenobi, and you get exclusive content. You get video and audio of CWK Pour Over, hosted by me, Tom Gross, and Corey Club. Some people are able to get access to the live stream. We record Pour Over, which is fun, the before, during, and after. A lot of behind-the-scenes stuff, a lot of goofing around, which is quite entertaining. People seem to like that. 
And then for certain members, you get access to us in a private Zoom call with me and whoever else is on at the certain level where we get the video and audio and get to chat for an hour. So it's it's really going to be fun. Hopefully we can really make that happen for sure. Well, again, next Monday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, you're going to get a chance to chat about your top five moments from the next episode of Clone Wars, Clone Wars, of Star Wars, The Bad Batch. Man, I am a mess tonight. Getting all my metaphors mixed up. So yeah, I was sorry about that with the logo. I need to pay attention on my monitor of all the things that go on, all the things I'm looking at. In fact, I'm going to take a picture now I'm going to post it in the CWK Cafe, our exclusive Facebook group, so you can see everything that I see while I'm doing this show. There's a lot of stuff to keep track of. There we go. I'm going to post it there so you can see it. Uh, this is kind of the fun behind the scenes of what goes on here at Facebook Live so much. It's so nice to spend tonight with you. Next Monday night is going to be Memorial Day. We will have a show. We will have a special Memorial Day episode of Coffee with Kenobi's Facebook Live. Get your top five ready after watching the new episode of The Bad Batch. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great Memorial Day. Good to chat with all of you. As always, I'm going to go get ready and record with Tom and Ross about this episode in even more detail. So if you're looking forward to more of a breakdown, be sure to look for that on Thursday on Coffee with Kenobi. Yes, we do need Clink to help me out in this in the studio. That would be great stuff. Well, thanks so much, everybody. Remember this. It's a podcast you're looking for. Have a good one.